Welcome to the channel, Supreme Team. I need all of the praying grandmothers on deck right now. All praying grandmothers on deck right now, okay? Get them hands together. Uh, start writing those notes in the Bible. We need to lay hands on Lil CJ, Lil Chris, Big Chris, and Nell Fletcher's boy, okay? He done got his ass locked up in the pokey for stealing of all things. And I have no idea what it was, but it doesn't matter because his parents are way too well off for that, okay? We know he's not stealing for food or shelter. So what is he stealing for? Whatever it is, he don't need it. He either has a compulsive disorder, like those wealthy ladies in the suburbs married to doctors who like to go into Walgreens and steal lipstick, or some kind of dependency that makes him make stupid decisions. But he is in need of the grandmother spirit, okay? Y'all hit that like button and share this video right now. That's how others find me here on YouTube. I am Diana Rose and I bring a unique commentary to your favorite reality TV shows and whatever is popping on social media. If you are not a subscriber, please become one. Hit that notification bell too, that way you don't miss any of my videos. I go by Diana Rose on all platforms and I appreciate every single one of y'all for rocking with me. Okay, you guys, allegedly, you are looking at the booking record of Christopher LaVon Fletcher. This is a young man you saw in Love and Marriage Huntsville. This is a copy of his mugshot and the police record, his booking record. It gives you all the details. He was arrested yesterday, April 3rd at 7.20 p.m. It gives you his date of birth. And then charge description is theft of property, third degree, between 501 to $1,499. The arresting agency is Huntsville Police Department and his bond amount is $5,000. Now, Chris Jr.'s parents, Nell and Big Chris, they talked about this kid's run-ins with the law on Love and Marriage Huntsville. It was a part of that big family dinner scene where Chris's daughter, Lexi, stormed out of the house and told her daddy that if he didn't stop playing with her, she was gonna come back and burn that mother effer down. Then Chris told her that she was a goddamn lie, pointed his finger down the road and told her to get the F on. Well, in that same episode, Nell Fletcher got on her son about his thieving, heaving ways. She told him that he was too damn entitled to her money and that if she wasn't giving it to him and all the rest of the kids, that she wouldn't have to work anymore because she would be rich, rich. She also said that the last time the boy got arrested, they had to go rescue his dogs. I guess he didn't let anyone know that he was in there. So by the time they found out, the dogs were so sick that they could have actually lost their lives, which is damn it trifling. But Chris and Nell did the right thing, took him to the vet, and had to pay a very expensive bill to get the dogs back healthy. Chris Jr. had the nerve to have an attitude at the dinner table, though, punishing his mama, not talking to her or answering her text messages because he wanted his dogs back. And she told him, hell no. Nah. She said that until you pay me the bail money, the legal fees and the money I spent on these dogs at the vet, I'm not giving you ish. And to be honest, whether he paid her or not, he shouldn't get those dogs back. Those dogs suffered while that boy sat in jail and he could have let somebody know. So I wouldn't give them back to him at all, ever. But if he did what they are alleging he did, it looks like he hasn't learned his lesson. We'll have to see how this story unfolds and if it will be a part of next season. Y'all talk to me in the comments. And let's keep little Chris, his parents, and those dogs lifted in prayer because they all need it. Y'all, one of my favorite songs by Escape is understanding and Latasha Scott is fresh out of it. Y'all should go ahead and stream the song right now. Get your lighters out while I tell you the story because it looks like that SWV Escape Tour Part 2 is not going to go down. Not if Latasha Scott has anything to say about it. Yesterday, straight from the A, dropped a story saying that Latasha Scott was seeking legal action against Mona Scott. 
the queen of reality TV and the love and hip hop franchise for trademark infringement. Latasha's lawyer contacted Mona Scott and said, this ain't Yandy. You will not be robbing me of my intellectual property. If y'all did not know, according to Yandy Smith, the love and hip hop franchise was her idea. She brought it to Mona. Her and Mona pitched it to MTV. And then Mona took a separate meeting with executives, squeezing Yandy Smith out and basically signed her name only on the dotted line. Yandy basically said that she forgave Mona and just took it on the chin. And maybe the two of them made some sort of behind the scenes deal to make it okay. But Latasha Scott, the powerhouse voice behind Escape, says she will not be that understanding. Latasha actually said that she was blindsided by the news that Escape had signed a contract to go on a nationwide tour without her. She also said that Mona Scott, of all people, should know better. She said that she was well aware of the trademark and that she required Latasha's permission to move forward because she required it in the past. Legal documents also say that Mona Scott is Escape's manager and that Latasha being left out of the current business dealings that got them on this tour was intentional. Now, despite how Mona has been accused of handling business, she definitely knows it. So you can bet that she has a trick up her sleeve on how to handle this. Mona definitely comes from the school of I'm going to do what I want to do and ask permission later. And since we already got that first season of the Queens of R&B, SWV and Escape, my guess is that she was going to put cameras on tour too and work that second season out later. Let me know what y'all think in the comments though. Are you on Latasha's side or SWV and Escape's side? Now, Latasha may not get a lot of people on her side because of all the crazy things her and her husband were accused of last year. Stealing her sister's money, uh, just doing bad business deals for the group itself. But two wrongs never, ever, ever, ever make a right. But y'all talk to me in the comments and let me know what you think. Now let's talk about Melody Cherie and what Carlos King had to say the other day. Y'all, the Melometers are like the Army Reserves, like the National Guards. The troops will march in and put their foot on somebody's neck if disrespect is perceived. And like the Army, they take pride in their work. They will be all they can be. So you can't play with them, okay? But Carlos King is out here testing the waters, trying to get his weight up and talking about Love and Marriage Huntsville, whether it is directly or indirectly. If y'all didn't know, he has committed to reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville this upcoming season with Heavenly Kimes. And I have a funny feeling that the after show that the bloggers are going to put on following Heavenly and Carlos's review is going to be better than the TV show, child. We are going to get our lives this coming Love and Marriage Huntsville season. Now, the other day, Carlos King and Nene Leakes were doing their own version of Taxi Cab Confessions, and they were discussing respectful cheating. Nene said that the side chicks and the F boys of today aren't like the ones of your grandmother and great grandmother's generation. These people want to be known. Now, there did used to be a time when a man could have a whole nother family around the corner. Hell, in the next town. And his wife didn't know it because she was stuck in the house. She didn't work outside. She went to the grocery store up the street. She came back home, did the cooking, the cleaning, the taking care of the kids. And never did these two families meet. And if she did find out about it, she probably just kept her mouth shut because there wasn't a whole lot she could do anyway. The men were the breadwinners and he controlled all of the purse strings, which means he controlled his wife. That's why women would keep a little something, something for themselves in case they had to flee. OK, shout out to Simon Gabadia. But anyway, Carlos King fixed his mouth to use Martel and Arion as an example of disrespectful cheating. Melody told the story on Love Amir Huntsville about Arion calling Martel's phone back to back to back and Martel refusing to answer it. So she did. And when she did, Arion says, bitch, 
put Martell on the phone. Melody said that her interaction with that girl on that phone call was how she found out that her husband was cheating. Now, Ariane said that she never called Melody the B word, but that doesn't mean a thing. It was still disrespectful for you to call that man's phone. And after you heard his wife answer it, it was double disrespectful, triple disrespectful for you to talk back, okay? You shouldn't have asked for any damn body. You should have said wrong number. But sometimes y'all, what you think is a nightmare turns out to be a blessing in disguise. Melody ended up posting this today, 4-4, which is the date that she left Martell. And she said that this is a day I'll forever remember, the day hashtag everything changed. And a few people actually reached out to her for clarification. And she posted this just a few minutes ago saying that April 4th, 2020 was the day that she walked away from her marriage that could have hindered her from reaching her full potential and purpose. Could have kept her forever on an emotional roller coaster and caused her to lose her mind. So today, April 4th, is a celebration. Forever victor, not victim. And I promise y'all, that is all I've ever seen. A victor, not a victim. I say it all the time. Melody is smart. Melody knows how to handle her business. For a young woman, there are people who die miserable. Women are taught to stay in situations that are bad for them when it comes to their family. Get the hell out of there and do not look back, okay? I put a little something up on my IG stories that sums this up perfectly. So if you are not following me on IG, check me out. Make sure you follow me over there. I go by Diana Rose. Carlos King also got raked over the coals by Mel's Nation for saying that Juan Dixon of Real Housewives of Potomac, Robin's husband, child, was the worst TV husband on reality TV. Now, I actually polled my Facebook group a couple of weeks ago asking who was the worst husband on Bravo. And the people in the group still wrote in Martel's name. Martel's not even an eligible option. He's not a husband on Bravo. Anyways, you guys, for me, it was a tie between Joe Goodice and Michael Darby. Having your husband being accused of sexually assaulting a man on the show on top of being on a hot mic and being heard saying that he would suck Juan Dixon, okay? And Joe Goodice with his raggedy business practices, having his wife do a prison term. Uh, both of those are no buenos for me. Y'all can talk to me in the chat about which one of the men you think. You can also follow me in my Facebook group. It is DRRT and vote for yourselves over there, okay? You guys also talk to me about the topics in this video. Let me know what you think about everything, okay? Like the video, share it, and make sure that you guys are a subscriber. I appreciate every single one of you for rocking with me, and I will check you all on the next one.